we are part of day five and let's go to online repository here is our online repository and here is our local repository some of you have unmuted i see some background noise i request you to please go on mute some of you have unmuted or logged in from the mobile phones please unmute yourself thank you so much so we are part of uh, day five before we go on to it i'm executing git commands and i see i'm part of local repository and i just fetched it and i'm just pulling it clear the screen mkdar which is a day 5 2022 03 and 14 let's get in the day 5 and i'll create running notes Before I get started with the today's session, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to let me know. I would like to answer them and move on further with the today's session. I just repeat again. If any questions from the day one to day four, please feel free to let me know. I would like to clarify them and I'll move on with the day five. If you're clear, I request you to put, please confirm in the chat window or unmute and talk to me as well. I got confirmation from Sudhir. He says I'm good. Apart from Sudhir, I don't see any response from anyone. So I request you all please to confirm. Vedu Gopal, Vinita, DBS, Krishna. Mahesh, one of the uh, student has joined with a no name, so please add the name to you. Jayant, Meghna, thank you so much for the confirmation. Did you get a chance to provision a CentOS instance or Ubuntu instance as part of your virtual box? Was it completed? Thank you, thank you. I need a response from everyone. Jan says my first class. Okay, no worries. Uh, Vinita says uh, Ubuntu, yes, but uh, CentOS will try today. Perfect. Joseph, Joseph also joined today. Krishna says able to install CentOS in VMware Workstation, uh, workstation Player. Perfect. Mahesh completed. Waiting Gopal also completed. That's good. Now we will like to
uh, let us move on to it. We were discussing about, okay, Joseph says I can do on AWS. Perfect, that's good. Now let us go back to it, go back to the local repository. If you have any questions or queries while I'm explaining, if you come across, please feel free to let me know. We discussed about system. We discussed about hardware command system commands, hardware commands. Then uh, we discussed about users command. We discussed about file commands. Joseph saying, what was the assignment? I will tell you, Joseph, give me some time. File commands. We were supposed to look at our two process related. We checked process also in our last session. File permissions. And I just want to one ask one question here. How many are new to Linux or Unix environment? You can just uh, update in the chat window. Or if you want to talk to me, you can just admit and talk to me as well. I got update from Vayner Gopal. He's new. There is no name for one uh, participant. He also says new. My hash is new. Joseph has fair knowledge of it. DPS is new. Okay, great. Just give me a minute. Okay, home says new. Home says new. I'm just writing the subheadings that we have yet to discuss upon the Linux. These are very, very important for DevOps engineer. So We will just discuss until this step, until uh, 14 steps. We will, in that, we have some of we already discussed it. And I'm explaining if you have any questions, I would like to sort out. And also, I just want to uh, do one more thing here. Now let's go back to the uh, VMware prison. Here it is. I would like to start this. We have successfully configured a CentOS 7 upon this VMware prison. Some of you were uh, installed Ubuntu. You can. You just need to have one operating system with you, whether it could be any distribution. CentOS is coming up now.
the login has a really high IP address. And I would like to connect remotely with the help of Git Bash. The cursor selection is inside this. Yeah, now it I just came up. Upon my machine, I have a Git Bash. I'm opening a Git Bash now. Even on your Windows, also we have a Git Bash. Please open the Git Bash and do a search tool. The one which I'm talking about is about connection, user connections, as part of the Linux command. One of the command, uh, one of the segments we were looking onto it connections to the system. Let's go back to the VS Code. Here we are looking onto login as part of this segment for login section. What we are doing is we are logging to the system. What we are trying to do here is we are executing a command called SSH space username at the rate IP address. Then with the last password, we, we provide the password. SSH. You can also use host name here instead of IP address. You can also use host name. IP address or host name of the machine. Or DNS name. And SSH is secure shell host. It runs on TCP port, port number 22. So how I'm connecting is I'm connecting to a, a Linux machine, which is running on uh, VMware Fusion from my host machine. On my host, I have Git Bash. Through Git Bash, we are connecting. We are saying that SSH space username is uh, root at the rate 192.168. What is that? Uh, 131.21. 131.128. 131 it will connect through a port called 422. Present working directory, SSH space, username is root at 192.168.131.128. This is an IP address. Here it is. And here is the username <coughs> and your last password. As we know the password, so we just entered the password. Now I connect it to a remote Linux machine. You can check the IP address and you can check the host name. Any queries upon this connection, doing or uh, connecting to the connecting to SSH, connecting to a Linux machine using Git Bash? Any queries upon this? Uh, SK show. Actually, I'm unable to connect my Ubuntu. To you are Bash. unable to connect. Okay. Two reasons that you are unable to connect means first thing is uh, let me take a new tab, new tab here. See, this is my operating system. This is my host machine. Okay. On my host machine, you need to check if config. If you're a Windows, the, okay, you are in a Linux machine, right? Ubuntu. So, so what is your host machine? Uh, Windows. Okay, Windows. So if it is Windows, just type IP config. IP config. Actually, you enter that. Bash, right? Actually, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm using my company yes. laptop. So when I try to open my bash, it directly connecting to my office login details. I mean, I have a login ID for my office. So it's showing as my login ID at the rate Hyderabad hyphen five CG something code. Okay. See, uh, work laptops will have a uh, restrictions. So don't try with that. Anyway, you can work upon this directly. So the reason why I'm just showing you this, if you have access to it, if it is your personal laptop, yes, you can do this. 
let's see this is what i did i connected to this operating system from here from a host machine to say diagrammatically this instance i connected from here using the media recall okay. yes. we use putty as well we use putty using putty also we will connect uh, the remote operating system putty terminal this one yeah, I'm actually uh, able to get this IP config on my bash. But uh, if you are able to get the IP address, one thing you have to check is uh, this mission IP and this mission IP should be in the same CIDR. Means, just look at my screen. Yeah. 192.168.131.28. Let me close this. And. Uh, here we go. Now, okay. 192.168. 192.168. Now, if I'll just show you my example here. If config pipe grep 192.168. This is the IP address of my machine, my host machine. Okay. What it is? Let me paste it here. Do you see 192.168? 192.168. Both are part of same CID, right? This okay. machine. See, host machine and the guest machine. This is a guest machine. Host and get should be same network. If then if they are in the same network, you will be able to do SSH. If it is this is in a different network like 172 or 10 dot, if this virtual machine, then you cannot connect. That is the reason you need to change your network from NAT to bridge. On your virtual box, you need to change your network. Yeah, actually, I've already adapted. changed it. But mm -hmm. uh, can I uh, share my screen once? No, no. Uh, as of now, see, you're saying first thing is you're saying it's company laptop. Yes, yes, it's company laptop. Then uh, no, you're not okay. supposed to use your company laptop for personal training purpose. As for okay. your uh, policy, so it's a violation. So do not do that. Just try another workaround, which is nothing but. Uh, connecting to a to a remote a, a AWS instance. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thanks. Perfect. So we have installed CentOS seven upon our upon our uh, VMware Fusion. Now we would like to uh, we would like to convert this command line into graphical which is nothing but installing of GUI modules upon this operating system. You can convert this command line user interface to graphical user interface with the help of softwares. Initially, we installed a server edition, which is like minimal, minimal installation we did. As part of the minimal installation, so if you can also say, check here, it says run level, run level n3 we have run levels so let me go back here and i'll, I'll take a new uh, file here run levels dot txt here it is I just want to explain about how to change the run levels. Different types of run levels we have in uh, most of the Linux distributions. If you are working with the older versions of Linux, then what we called, and if you are working with the latest versions of Linux distributions, and what we call run levels, that I would like to show you now. Run levels. This is run level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the run levels we have. 
zero stands for init zero is a command you need to execute from the command line from you can here you can execute the init space zero if i hit enter it will stop the server means it's a reboot it's a shutdown i'm sorry it's not reboot init space six means reboot this means reboot or nothing but a restart restarting of operating system we do with the help of init space six command if you want to shut down your system power off power off will be done with the help of init space six init space zero init space zero means shut down or power off we execute this particular command meaning of it is shut down or power off we have in space 6 which is restarting of your or rebooting your operating system generally we do this with the help of graphically as part of our windows operating system if you have part of linux or unix operating system as part of server edition you are supposed to execute a command called init space 6 for restart or reboot init space 0 shut down or power off we will have targets we will have targets i'll come back to this again system ctl is a command I want to list units. If I say execute this one, units, I see a lot of units here. There are many units we have here. Come back from here, here the screen. <clears throat> now I want to only filter, <clears throat> filter specific units called type equal to target. These are the targets we have. Basic dot target, multi iPhone user target, network dot target. There is one more graphical dot target. Where it is? As part of CentOS, as of now, this is not loaded with the graphical, so you don't have a graphical dot target here. This server is launched with the help of command line. Means. It's a, it's a text or minimal. The operating system what we present here is a minimal. Means no graphical user interface. We would like to convert this operating system onto graphical, like Windows, where you can access graphically, where you can access command line. That we can do it. Before you convert it, we have to understand the run levels. These are the run levels we have multi iphone user data target i want to just copy this one this we call it as init space three means multi iphone user data target what are the functionality it has multiple users can log in multiple tasks they can perform it has command user interface and it has network It has a network. These are the features of multi icon user dot target. Similar way, we have one more target, which is five, run level five. This is called graphical dot target. Graphical dot target. So we already have this functionality here. So what is added here? And to this particular run level is multiple users can log into the Linux machine. They can perform multiple tasks. They can do see it's only command user interface. And unto this particular run level file, which is added is GUI added. The graphical user interface has been added to this particular run level. Run level zero is called run level zero target or power of dot target. 
this has one more name run level zero dot target or power of the target there is one more run level which is one and that's called rescue which is called init space one which is nothing but run level one dot target or it's called as rescue dot target what is the functionality we have here is we have single user can log in single user he can perform single task single user can log in single task at a time not multiple tasks single user you can say single user user can log in and it has only command user interface and no network no network and this has been improved this has been improved as part of run level two run level is one is only for rescue mode when you forgot your uh, password of your root password then that time you use switch to run level one you change a root password that the reason is called rescue.target you have some kernel level issues then switch to run level one and you fix the issue and what is the functionality here single user command user interface and no network you cannot share anything to anybody with any, anybody and it's no network here even as part of this run level two is called uh, run level two dot target it has multi-user let, let me copy this it has multi-user and it can, we can perform multiple tasks it's command user interface and no network sharing Network sharing doesn't exist as part of run level two. Run level one, no network, only rescue mode. Log in, troubleshoot your kernel level issues or change your root user password. Wherein run level two was developed. Initially, they developed a run level zero to power up your operating system. Then they developed run level one to, to single user mode and uh, single task you can perform. There is no network it's only for rescue mode after that they're looking at this they developed on one more run level which is for run level two you can log in multiple users like in windows if you uh, if you log in there is windows is a single user mode if one user logs in the other user should log out other user should log out wherein as part of run level two, multi-user functionality has been improved, uh, implement, implemented. Multitask they can perform, and it is only command user interface, and there is no network sharing. This network sharing has been improved as part of run level three. It's like stage by stage development they did. As of now, run level four, no docs, no updates not in use you can say not in use for now there is no information about this so it's still in post status this run level is not implemented yet so we have run level zero for shutdown run level six for restart run level five so what we have in run level three we will have in run level five addition to this we will have this one graphical user interface graphical mode or graphical user interface Before I move further, are we clear about this? What I'm trying to explain here. In your Windows, you have graphical window. You just execute graphical commands and you power off and restart or whatever you do with it. But when you are working with the command line, you must know which type of operating system you launched, whether it is a graphical with a CLI or only minimal with a CLI. Any questions upon this run levels? I would like to clarify your doubts here and move further. 
Joseph is asking, is entire training is going to on VirtualBox? No. We are just starting with our local machine. Once you understand things here, let's we will move on to the AWS. I hope you are able to hear me. If you are able to hear me, please do confirm upon these run levels, whether it is clear or not. If you don't say anything, I will be in confusion more. Only four participants are updated that they are clear. Remaining all not responding anything. So let's make this as a more interactive session. I keep on asking uh, questions on each chunk of topic. You should respond it. If you're not responding, that means you just logged in and you are away from your machine. Yeah. Please, res I respect your time. Please also please respect our uh, skilling up skilling journey. Be active for the 60 minutes. After that, it's up to you. Yeah, thank you so much for response. I see a question from uh, my AC saying that I need some time to understand. See, I'm saying about whatever I have explained here, is this clear or not? Anyway, it, it needs some time to digest the things which I have explained. When you start continuously practicing, when you start looking onto it, then you feel it. But now I'm saying my question is, the reason why I'm asking confirmation is, are we clear about each and every command what we have written and have given some description here? If you have anything, uh, you know, if you don't understand, you can ask me. I would like to clarify in a layman way so that you will understand easily. You have smartphone, you have laptops, your tabs. All these devices has power up button. You click on power up button that is called power up the target. In the background, a command will be executed in its space zero. You don't see that because you just click on the button. But in the background, you have this option. And your mobile, your smartphone always loads with run level five, which is graphical.target. That's the reason you you just you know open browser, you open uh, chart window, WhatsApp, you open a lot of stuff you'll be doing at a time. Single user, multitasking you'll be doing, and you have even on your smartphone also you have command and user interface, you have graphical. By default, graphical is loaded. And you have a network, that's the reason you're able to share things with your colleagues, friends. So if you want to restart your smartphone, what do you do? In space zero. You don't type it, you just click on reboot button on your smartphone. Similar functionality is applicable to the one which I have explained is a layman way of the smartphone which is with us. Similar scenario is applicable for all the operating systems. Great. Now we would like to check which run level is we loaded. We have installed an operating system. Which run level we have loaded? It says multi iPhone user dot target. There is no graphical thing here. So in order to in order to provision graphical, what we have to do is we have to install GUI modules to check the targets. We have to use this command: system CTL space list iPhone units space equal equal to iPhone iPhone type equal to target list of targets you can see one of the target we are saying we are looking at it is is as of now my machine is loaded with a multi iPhone user target why because the ISO file what we have inserted onto this VMware Fizzin is a minimal addition minimal is nothing but a server addition server addition is nothing but a, which has only command line user interface no GUI modules we can convert this machine into GUI by installing GUI modules. Then you will be able to see graphical target. You can switch between from graphical to command line, command line to graphical. For that, what we have to do is we have to install softwares. The first command I'm, I'm just executing is clear the screen, log into your operating system. 
just execute m space group space list m space group space list so m command is fall under package management as part of our previous step install packages rpm and m command these two commands are for centos red hat amazon linux oracle linux for this distributions for ubuntu debian based distributions apt or apt i can get command these two commands we use as part of installing softwares i checked the list of list here list of group packages we have in that i would like to install one of the software which is called we install this operating system with, with the help of minimal installation now i would like to convert this into genome or server with gui genome is one of the desktop environment kde is one of the desktop environment so i can go with the genome or kde or i can just go with the server with gui and along with that available groups graphical administration tools need to be installed server with gui along with that graphical administration tools when we are installing server with gui one of the desktop environment we will install it in this particular centos we have option for genome desktop or kde desktop desktop types i would like to install a software desktop genome desktop i want to install group install m space group install genome desktop the one which i copied from here <coughs> from this groups the next one is about graphical administration tools graphical administration tools we are installing these two things so that my system will get uh, graphical user interface after i install successfully hit enter it might take five to ten minutes because it is going to download the software from online and the size of the software will be approximately one gb will be and after download it will install it do you see 2.4 gb it is installing to convert your command line you have to face a minimal instance and to gui you need 2 gb files and now we are downloading and installing upon this machine in real time we don't do this step as a devops engineer you don't uh, convert a command line server into gui but as you are new to the linux world or linux world until now you might have worked with uh, windows 
Windows by default, it comes with a GUI with CLI. But when Linux and Unix comes with a separate link. Server edition means only command line. If you want to convert that into GUI, then you have uh, you can install like this, or you can directly install a desktop edition of CentOS or Amazon Linux or Red Hat. Could be anything. You can directly install it, or you can install some command line. Then you can convert into GUI desktop at any time. But in real time missions, all the real time missions are are server edition, which is only command line you can put this. To give you some insights how the graphical user interface will look, I'm installing all this. Okay, if you want to convert your Ubuntu onto a uh, graphical, then you are supposed to execute this particular command, which let me write down here. PT task task cell just execute this command if it doesn't available then first you need to update it then you need to install it you need to install task cell after installing this task cell open this task cell just execute task cell so once task is executed there you have to select a uh, star mark you need to select with a, um, with a space bar which is called uh, ubuntu desktop after that hit enter next you need to hit enter next you have to go then click on uh, click on ok button so that installation will take place. You can just try the steps so that uh, it will convert your command line user interface to graphical user interface. First thing is you need to do update and upgrade command on Ubuntu. APT or APT and get you have to do. After updating, you can just single command or you can say two commands together. After update upgrade, you are supposed to install a task cell and execute this command or or I'm saying you can use APT and get. You can use APT or APT and get. To install task cell. After installing task cell, you just need to open uh, task cell on the command line. You need to enter. Then you will be able to see Ubuntu desktop. Ubuntu desktop. Select that Ubuntu desktop and click on OK. Click on OK, and it will take approximately one hour, uh, fifteen minutes, fifteen to twenty minutes. Then it will install. QE modules. Click on OK. It will continue installing. These are the steps for Ubuntu. I hope it's clear to you. And the steps what we followed here as part of CentOS and uh, uh, the Red Hat distribution is convert server server to GUI. First, you need to do a group list. After listing a group, you need to install softwares. approximately 2 GB files will be there. After that, you were supposed to uh, reboot your machine. Just a reboot. 
reboot now you can you know how to do it in its space six these steps are for centos for now you can just set centos we are working upon centos and this is for ubuntu as part of this step we, what all we are doing is we were working with the package management we are working with uh, run levels these are the run levels now let's go back to the centos and see what is the status of it it's still installing it Still, it is installing. There are 1102, 1102 packages are installing upon our machine. After it is installed, if you type here, I mean, if you reboot your machine, then uh, you need to switch to run level five because the by default it switched to run level. It is in run level three, which is multi iphone user dot target that need to be converted to graphical user dot target now we don't do it we do it later we reached after this installation we just restart our uh, virtual machine then we will be able to see a graphical user interface if not you can switch run level to graphical dot target i'll show you how to do that Still, it is installing. So we have to wait because it's two GB files. Meanwhile, I'll go back to the local. I will just uh, submit the changes. From local main to online main code has been pushed whoever is new to this today's session i request you to go through this url where you will have uh, day one to day five notes video will not be here video you need to ask a uh, team team will share with you this is a url you can bookmark it in tomorrow's session i will uh, add you want to my repository because new people are joining that the reason i was in, still this repository is, is part of public i'll convert this into property in tomorrow session or day after but based on the users we'll do that so yeah installation is completed now i just want to check run levels run level three i want to see one more command here which is targets when we executed previously there was no graphical target here even now it is not there so what we have to do now i we would like to restart this i want to switch to run level 5 i mentioned run level 5 and i'm okay do you see i just switched to run level 5 the Graphical user interface is open now. Click on CentOS, provide the password, and here we go. We converted a command line user interface to graphical user interface. So 
system is loading now. Previously, it was loaded in a command line. Now it is loaded with a graphical user interface of my CentOS. This is my CentOS operating system. Genome is one of the desktop environment. The user interface, what you look at, is a genome desktop environment. Now you can access things graphically, uh, desktop documents, downloads, and you can go to my computer, other locations. As part of other locations, you have my computer, which is like nothing but a file system. These are the different, uh, we discussed about bin directory. We discussed about as bin directory. So graphical things, you, you're, you're accessing your operating system as a graphical user interface, which is CentOS 7. If you want to power off your machine, you can just do, execute these buttons. Power off button. Who, you, who logged in? CentOS is a user. Bluetooth is connected. Audio is connected. Even it's connected a LAN. Here you have settings. You can change your configurations. It looks similar like your Windows. So we converted a command line user interface to graphical user interface. You can open a terminal here. And you can see which operating system it is. You can execute commands here. You can say run levels, run level. From run level 3 to run level 5, we switched. You can configure by default run level 3. Or you can just configure run level 5 as a by default. It's up to us. Vice versa, but when you connect this remote graphical interface in remote link, still it shows a uh, command line. But here you can see whether it is a graphical or command line. Five from three to five is switched. So graphical user interface instance we connected. Are we clear about it? Any questions over here? I would like to turn off my computer, which is uh, the virtual machine. You see, in its space zero, I mentioned. Now the virtual machine is going down. Power off. You see, it's in power off mode. I don't see a response from you all. If you don't understand anything, please let me know. I can um, guide you. If you are clear, please do confirm that you are clear. Thank you. I hope you are enjoying the session. You should enjoy the session, not like, you know, you have to be very restricted. So please do hands on. I just added two images. That's the reason I'm committing the code. I added and these commands I will explain later. We have separate session for this. Code has been pushed from local to online. You have access to it. Please go through it and please practice them. And if you have any questions, queries, feel free to ask me in the session. And we don't have support session for asking, uh, you know, clarifying the doubts. This is only one session you have all. Whatever you learn on daily basis, please practice and come up with your questions. I would like to answer them. Thank you all and I wish you a wonderful day. And take care. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I have one question actually. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, whenever I'm trying to connect the using Git Bash to the Ubuntu server, 
it is showing okay. error like connection refused on port 2022 uh, port 22 okay uh, two things here what is your host operating system a host operating system is ubuntu, ubuntu. Uh, linux sorry no linux, host, linux. Host. Uh, sorry no, windows 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 which version of windows windows 11 windows 11 on top of the windows 11 you install oracle virtual box or which one oracle virtual box oracle virtual box and as part of oracle virtual box have you changed the network to bridge yes yes you have changed it okay yes. and uh, you have changed it and you're trying to do ssh to the uh, instance it's saying that uh port 22 is restricted but yes. have you checked this this step what is your host machine ip address uh, yes i is checked actually. Host, host machine i didn't check actually yeah your host and your guest machine ip address should be first two octet should be same first mm -hmm. octet 192 dot second octet is 168 if both are same then you will be able to do ssh from year to year if you are into different network your guest is a different network then you cannot connect means your host machine first two octets should be equal to your guest machine first two octets. Then you'll be able to access it. On your host machine, uh, actually yeah. to check the host machine uh, IP, we need to type the command host machine hyphen I, right? No, no, no. You are on Windows, so you have to just say IP config. IP config yes uh here yes both are same actually 192.168. it's default gateway name 192.168.29.1 here and uh, my ubuntu server ip is uh 192.168.29.208 it should be you should be able to connect check the username and check the password two things okay the way you are doing ssh the other username, thing is yeah please go ahead username is that only na, sir actually when we do host name that username will come no, no or the login no. username while you're configuring uh you will be configuring manually the username yes yes so yes. i don't know which username you configured so username and yes. password should be valid then only you'll be able to do ssh to this this here username is login username or the host name when we type that username no host name is just name alias name to your computer okay 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 yeah username is the one which you configure during the the vm provisioning while you're setting okay. up this instance vm upon the virtual virtual box at that time it will ask while installing it it will ask username so that you have to check it out yes yes okay Great. Please do that and come up with a query. I'll, I would like to follow that. Hi, Keshav. This is Om. Hey, Om. Please go ahead. Actually, today is my first class. Uh, okay. I want to know what tools are covered in the total course. No, as of now, we just started with our own host machine, which is like whatever you have Windows or Mac. Upon that, we installed. Yeah. Um, uh vmware oracle virtual box have prison the why prison means i'm a mac user so that's the reason yeah, okay. for me oracle virtual box is not working so i'm going with a vmware prison so if you're a windows yeah. user go with oracle virtual box on top okay. of that uh, means what tools are... yeah. see okay. i'm saying that the same thing i'm covering if you go to this day one session here you will understand what i'll be covered day one day two day three day four you'll have running notes here you'll have done diagrams mm -hmm. as well you, ha you have this diagram you just go through this you'll understand it yeah okay. uh, one more question case uh, uh, after the aws or can you jenkins or anything first we will uh, what discuss about First, we will discuss about Linux administration part. Then we will go with the CACD tools. Once it is done, we will go with the AWS. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you, Bishop. Okay. Thank you all. I wish you a wonderful day. Hello. Hey, Joseph. Please go ahead. Yeah, please. Um, concerning the Kubernetes, is it the EKS or the CK Kubernetes you would teach? Have you received the con content from the team? Post content? Yeah, I, I have it in front of me. Okay. It's a Kubernetes, just a Kubernetes we provision upon two VMs. We don't cover wow. AWS EKS. We will, because here in the US, um, employers really desire EKS than any other Kubernetes. If you are Google, good. If you have Google, um, Kubernetes, good. If you are um, at AWS, if you have AWS Kubernetes, which is the EKS, good. But um, the other one you're talking about is not really, I know people go ahead and get that, but a lot of um, um, employers here, they need um, AWS Kubernetes, and we don't really use a virtual box here to do anything. It's except for practical sake, like you know, using it in your house. If you don't, if you want to save money, you don't want to spend money on the cloud, even though the cloud is free, at least 12 months, depending on your usage. But that uh, virtual box is uh, something I, I have never used it before, and it is not really in my interest to use it. So I would prefer, you know doing everything on AWS. So I'm really interested in um, Terraform, Ansible, Kubernetes, and um, um, I know Maven is just a build to it. All those important uh, tools are what I'm really um, uh, looking for. That's why the, the man that gave me the, the link to join the class, I have told him my requirements, what tools I need to have in my belts so I can secure uh, a, 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 an interview. So he said I should join the class and say, I like the way you teach. I like the way you teach. And Thank you. you. You take time to explain. But those tools that is in our mind, is in my mind. Uh, I don't live in India. I live in the US. So the US market might be different from Indian market. Here, you don't really see people using Vagrant, you know. All we use here for configuration management is either Puppet, Ansible, or Chave, you know. And in terms of uh, configuration, I mean, in terms of con uh, continuous integration, here, Jenkins really top the line, seconded by GitLab, you know. You don't really hear about circle ci all you see all you hear here in the in the western part of this world is just jenkins and gitlab you know and why i'm really coming into trying to learn this devops very well is because i'm, I'm a cyber security person and i want to switch into DevSecOps. so my colleagues say without you knowing well on DevOps, you won't be able to understand what, what DevSecOps is all about. Even though I understand what DevSecOps is all about, it's just an enhancement of DevOps. That is implementation of uh, security in DevOps. Like, like, like what we used to preach, we, we have to shift left. Now we are saying, don't just shift left alone. You have to also shift right. So those are the tools that I really want to learn, Kubernetes, Terraform, I mean, everything automation, because here you don't expect to, to click the mouse, you know, and go to graphical interface. No, 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 it's not done here in this part of the world. Everything is Terraform and Ansible, Terraform and Ansible. Yeah, and also, I don't know if you also teach something like um, Elasticsearch, uh, Prometheus and Gravana, you know, for log, aggregation and uh, monitoring. Hey, uh, just so I completely agree with you, but uh, the way of learning is here, we don't directly jump onto cloud because yeah. all the participants are from different places and okay. uh, they have different backgrounds. So we don't directly jump onto cloud. They don't understand it. So that's okay. the reason we always start with the uh, OS op operating system administration in, in terms of Windows or Linux. Okay. Then we uh, student to familiar with their own operating system. 
And while we are working upon this, we deal with the virtualization. As part of virtualization, we deal with the Oracle, we deal with VMware, we will deal with hypervisors. So once we work upon that, the similar thing we do it on AWS. In AWS, under compute, we provision an EC2 instance. Oh, after, so, after showing, I just want to understand before I get into it, getting into it means paying my school fees or paying my training training fee you know what i want to understand is uh, like all these tools you've mentioned all these things will be running on aws right oh uh, no first we look at uh yes we run it on aws initially we start with the virtual box once yeah. the student is flexible once he understand what is virtualization what is a server how to connect it once it's clear then I will switch back to AWS. As part of AWS, I'll go to services. Under services, I'll go to compute. Then I'll explain about EC2. And okay, so EC2, what we do is we provision instances. Now, if you look at, I have provisioned most of the instances here. I'll just show you that uh, I can give you some clarity upon this. So do you see this? All instances were provisioned by me. Means okay. whatever we do it on local, we do it on AWS by provisioning okay. of instance. Once you understand this, if I talk about Kubernetes, here I provision a Kubernetes cluster. If I talk, if I talk about managed Kubernetes service, which is part of AWS, which mm -hmm. is part of containers, if I talk, talk about elastic Kubernetes service, then mm -hmm. you will be able to understand. It. If I don't yeah, so, handle the way of doing it, they don't yeah, understand. So, you see those two services, you see that, oh, go back again, go back. Yeah. You see those two services? Yeah. Because I have to make sure I'm going for what I I, I, I have in my mind to, to achieve. Yeah, the Elastic Kubernetes services and Elastic Container services. Here, they don't really, although they, you need the knowledge of Docker, but when you, when you go into, some companies they 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 don't even use um, Docker Swarm. They only use the EKS with the ECS. That ECS is for orchestration. What Swarm will will would do? You understand? I so, completely agree, Joseph. Uh, this is a content what we cover. You can just have a look at this content. Yeah, I have I have this. I have gone through a lot of them, and it's a lot, and it's a lot. How long will it take us to finish this? It's 40 to 50 hours. Sorry? 40 to 50 hours between. Okay. Okay. So, like I have seen Puppet, I don't really need Puppet because here we use um, no, push base. We don't really use pull base in terms of configuration management or in terms of, yeah, in terms of configuration management. We like to push. You don't really like to, you know, to pull. I know most companies use it that, but a lot, 90% uses a, a pool base, which is Ansible for configuration management. So those are my desires. Those are the tools that I desire to learn. Yeah, those are the tools I desire to learn. So yeah, this is the content, Joseph, what we cover. Please go through this and please talk to the team. They will uh, clarify you. Okay. Yeah. Then thank you. It would, okay, thank you so much. Let me let me allow you. Let me allow you. Here is eleven forty four, so minutes to twelve here. Let me allow you. Maybe we'll we'll talk some other time. Thank you so much for, for your thank time. You. Thank you. Take care all. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye bye.